Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about sweet picking and arpeggios and kind of how I see the fretboard in terms of major and minor scales in sweet picking. Uh, some of my favorite players like Jason Becker and Richie Kotzen and Paul Gilbert and Yngwie Malmsteen, they tend to stick to, at, at least from what I observed, they stick to three main sweeping shapes, whether it's major or minor. Sometimes they travel outside of this, but when I kind of first discovered this, it, it kind of opened up a lot of doors for me. So I'm just gonna break this down for you briefly. So we're gonna start with major. The three main sh sweeping shapes they kind of are reminiscent of bar chords on the guitar. So that's an A major bar chord, okay? With the root on the E string, fifth fret. All right, so that's where we're gonna get our first shape from. And then the second shape is gonna come from this. Okay, that's also A major, but the root is on the 12th fret on the A string. And then their third shape is gonna come from this. It's still an A major, but you can see the notes are just stacked a little bit differently. All right, so the first shape is gonna come from this. And what an arpeggio means, arpeggio, arpeggio, different people pronounce it differently. That's what sweeping means. When people say sweeping, they tend to think of arpeggios, okay? And what that is, is you are playing notes of a chord separately. So with A major, I'm gonna, to make it an arpeggio, it's gonna sound like this. So you can hear how they both go together, all right? Now, the next one, you get this shape, okay? And then for this one, you get this shape, and you get that shape. So I'm going to get a little bit deeper. So like I said, whenever you hear Richie Kotzen or any of these people or, or Jason Becker, they mainly stick to these three shapes, three for major, so... And then there's also three for minor, okay? But first I'm gonna show you how you can actually sweep it and make it sound smooth. A lot of people, when they think about sweeping, they think that you're just raking over the strings and there's no hammer on or pulling off involved. But for right now, I'm gonna show you how I do it. If you stick to this formula, whether it's doing a few down strokes and then a hammer on and then a pull off, if you stick to that and not trail off, and then it'll become easier. When you play it faster, it'll just become muscle memory. So here's the first shape. So here's what I'll do. Middle finger, fifth fret on the E string. And then the next one, fourth fret, A string, first finger. All right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with two down strokes. So, all right? And then what you're gonna do next is you're gonna actually hammer on the seventh fret on the A string. So two down strokes, then hammer on. Now like I said, don't do this, don't do, don't do two down strokes and then an up stroke. Just stick to this formula for right now and you'll, it, it'll work out in the end. So, like I said, first position in the major. So down, down, hammer on, and then what you're gonna do is bar the next string. So that's also seventh fret on the D string now. So you have, and then middle finger, so down, down, hammer on, down. So let me do that again, down, down, hammer on, down. And then the rest of the strings, you're gonna be downs picking as well. This is where you're gonna actually get that sweeping from, okay? So instead of just sweeping all the way down, there's gonna be a hammer on in there. So down, down, hammer on, down. Then middle finger, sixth fret on the G string, and then you're gonna bar the rest. Fifth fret on the B string, fifth fret on the E string, okay? So down, down, hammer on, down, 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 down. One more time. Down, down, hammer on, down, 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 down. So there's just one hammer on there. All right, and then one more note. I'm gonna use my pinky on the ninth fret on the high E string. So all together for that first position, it'll sound like this. And that last note, it just depends on where you wanna go. For what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna stream these all together. 
So that last note I didn't pick. If I was gonna stay right there, I might do an upstroke. But now, so that's our first slide up so after we hammer on we're gonna slide up to the 12th fret on the E string okay so and you can see now that we're in that next shape so and how we're gonna do this we're gonna pull off so first finger will be on the ninth fret on the E string we're gonna pull off and then middle finger 10th fret on the B string. And then this is where we're going to get the upstroke. So like we did with the first one, it was mostly downstrokes, so just raking across like that with the exception of that hammer on there. When we come, and like I said, you can do this any other way. You can, you can start from the bottom or you can start from the top. It's just whatever you want to do. But I'm just going to show you how you can stream these all together. Okay, so pull off. And then first finger, and you can see how these shapes, the chord itself and the arpeggio itself, they, they, they flow through it. So if you can remember the chord shape itself, you can remember the sweep. Okay, so, so now we're in that next inversion. So we slid up here, we're going to pull off ninth fret on the E string, upstroke on the B string, upstroke on the 9th fret on the G string, upstroke 11th fret on the D string, upstroke on the 12th fret on the A string. So, if I'm going to start from here, pull off, up, 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 up. Now, I know that I said upstrokes before. They're not individual upstrokes. It's your raking across. Like that. Okay, so pull off, up, 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 and you have a choice. You don't have to do it just the way that I do it, but when I go to the next note, I pull off of that. So where I was at the 12th fret on the A string, my next note is 7th fret on the A string. So instead of just doing an upstroke to get that next note, I'm going to pull off. So pull off, and then I'm going to hammer on, oops, and then my next note is middle finger on the ninth fret on the low E. So pull off, hammer on, and then you actually can slide back down to where you were. So down, down, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on, slide, pull off, up, 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 pull off, then you're back to where you were. So I'm just gonna loop that a few times. this um, this is what works for me and this is what works you know this is how I get it smooth if you can remember okay I have to pull off on this note here or I have to I have to break this note or I have to hammer on here if you remember this it just becomes muscle memory over time so when you speed it up then you don't have to think about it as much it, it, your hands will just kind of do its own thing okay so so far 
we have that chord, that bar chord with the root on the E string, and then we have that chord with the root on the A string. So we have two arpeggios so far out of the three for the major. We have show you one more. So we have this chord and then this chord. Now I'm just going to restack my fingers a little bit. I'm using the same root, but the notes are just stacked a little bit differently. And so from this third and final chord, we're going to get one more arpeggio, one more sweep from that. Okay? So, and we can kind of get in and out of this however you like. But this is how I'm going to show you today. So here's the first. Then there's the second. And then here's the third. Okay, so first finger on the 12th fret on the A. Then I'm going to use my pinky. If you don't like to use your pinky, I, I don't use it a lot, but I, I would get used to it because it, it, it becomes useful, especially when you're doing something like this. All right, so first finger, 12th fret on the A string. Ring finger, 16th fret on the A string. And then my middle finger, I'm gonna get the next three strings. So 14th fret on the D string, G string, and B string. Okay, so you have this so far. And then I'm gonna use my first finger, that's free. I'm gonna put it on the 12th fret on the E string. And then pinky, 17th fret on the high E string. So, so far I have this. And even, like I said before, when I'm doing the six string sweep, just because it's a six string sweep and now I'm doing a five string sweep, it doesn't mean necessarily that the hammer-ons and pull-offs change. They do, but the same idea is there. So for example, with this, I'm gonna pluck that first note. Prep, you know, sometimes I use an upstroke or a downstroke, but I'm gonna, I'll just use an upstroke for now. Hit my first note, and I'm going to hammer on to the 16th fret on the on the A string, and then I'm just going to do you know a downward rake for the next. So 12, 16, 14, 14, 14, 12. Okay, so pluck, hammer on, oops, pluck, hammer on, strum, 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 strum. And then what I ended up doing, and like I said, if you want to pluck that last note with an upstroke. You can, it doesn't matter. It just depends on where you want to go. For example, with that first shape, because I wanted to get into that next position, I ended up sliding up. And because the note rang out, you know, pretty clearly, I don't need to pluck it again. So, down, down, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on, slide up, pull off, up, 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 hammer on. I mean, pull off, hammer on. <laughs> okay? So, with this shape, if I was just going to come back down again, up, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on, and then I could just pull off again, so I'm back in the 12th fret on the E, and I'm going to go up, 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 and then I'm going to pull off. So if I was just going to loop that, up, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on, pull off, up, 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 pull off. So if you're just going to loop that, my right hand, that's where you get that actual sweeping motion from. So you can see through this video, it's not just you're raking every note. There's a, few, you know, there's a note here or there that you have to pull off or you have to hammer on. faster isn't that difficult. It, it, people run into problems if they, oh, they want to play fast immediately and then it just kind of just sounds muddy. If you start slow and you know in your mind, okay, I hammer on this note and I pull off this note, to, to speed it up, it's not really that difficult it, once you just ingrain these in your brain. So right now we have this chord, we have this chord, and then we have this chord. 
So if I'm going to connect these all together, so I have that chord, this chord, this chord. They're, they're in three different positions. It's still an A major. This is A major, this is A major, this is A major. So I'm going to go like this. So that's all one long stream of A major. And you could do this in any key. The cool thing about guitar, like if I was going to play on piano, if I was going to play an A major, it'd be, what, like three sharps, right? Yeah, maybe. And then, if, or if I was going to play in B flat, there would be, there'd be two flats. And so, so these positions kind of change the amount of white keys and black keys. But with guitar, you, all you have to do is shift it up. That's what's so beautiful about it. So if I was in A before, if I want to go in B, the, the shapes are the same. You just shift them up. It's so cool. So those are the three major shapes. And then the minor shapes, the difference between a major chord and a minor chord is just one note. It's pretty profound. So we're still in A when we were doing A major before with that bar chord, okay, the, the first finger on the fifth fret, uh, ring finger seventh fret on the A, uh, pinky seventh fret on the D, middle finger sixth fret on the G, first finger uh, fifth fret on the P, and we're barring that, so first finger is also fifth fret on the E, okay? All we have to do to make it minor is just take that middle finger off. And now it sounds sad. It sounded happy before, and now it sounds sad, okay? And, and just like with the major, how it follows that, the minor is the same way. So whenever you hear somebody say, oh, the major or the minor third, that's what it's referring to. It's just referring to that one note that makes the chord happy or sad, okay? I'm not going to get into notes or really theory or anything really, but so just like we had the major chord in that position, in this position and in this position, the minor chord follows that. So just like we have one note difference between that first, now that's sad. Now here was the major. We just got at least the first finger and that, I mean the pinky and the first finger are the same. What we're going to do is just reverse the ring finger and the middle finger. So now the pinky's on the 12th fret, uh, middle finger's on the 10th fret on the D, first finger is on the ninth fret on the G, and then the ring fingers on the 10th fret on the B. So here's the major, and then here's the minor. All right, so here's minor before in the first position, then our second position, and then our third position where we had this as major. All that we're going to do is we're just going to move one note, move it to here. So we just got to restack our fingers. Now we're in minor. So just going over it, first position. That's minor. That's minor as well. And that is minor. So it, it's just one note difference. Now the sweep also follows that, right? So uh, same pattern before. It's not like just because it's a minor sweep now that the sweeping pattern itself has to change. It doesn't. So uh, for the minor shape in the first position, middle finger, fifth fret on the E, first finger, third fret on the A, ring finger. You're going to have to stretch it a little bit. You know, you could do this in, in, in any key, obviously, but I'm just going to stick an A for now. So middle finger, fifth fret on the E, first finger, third fret on the A, ring finger, 7th fret on the A, I'm going to bar it, so the ring finger is on the 7th fret on the D, and then we're going to bar the next with these first three fingers, because like I said, this note became this, so I have, and then I'm going to bar the rest with that first finger, so 5th fret on the G, B, and E. Okay, so watch this. And then, instead of this note, it's going to be this. So, what is that? Eighth fret on the high E string? So, before with major, we had this. With minor, we have this. And the sweeping pattern is the same. That's the cool thing about it. Once you kind of get this down, it's easy just to move from major to minor. So, down, down, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on or upstroke, depending on where you're going. shape, we have this. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before. I'm going to go up, and then I'm going to slide to the 12th fret. 
on the high E string. Okay, so I'm gonna pull off eighth fret on the E string, upstroke tenth fret on the B string, upstroke ninth fret on the G string, upstroke tenth fret on the D string, upstroke twelfth fret on the A string, pull off seventh fret on the A string, and then hammer on eighth fret on the low E string. So you can see the sweeping pattern is the same. So if I'm coming up from up here, pull off, up, 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 pull off, hammer on, and then we're back to where we were. The sweeping pattern is the same. And also, some people see it, some people don't, but there, there's a similarity between the sweeps itself. So with major, oops, or minor, Close. So same thing with this one. This is major, and then this is minor. It's very close, right? So that's the second fret. Oops. Second position, I mean. Now we're going to do the third position. So first finger, twelfth fret on the A string. Pinky, fifteenth fret on the A string. The ring finger is going to bar the D string and the G string, fourteenth fret. So we're going to do down strokes for those, so up on the 12th fret, hammer on the 15th fret, and then down, down, 14th fret on the D and the G. And then down, middle finger, 13th fret on the B, down, 12th fret on the high E string, and then for now I'm just going to do an upstroke, 17th fret on the high E string. So. Like I said, when you're coming up and down, just staying right in that. Up, hammer on, down, 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 down. Hammer on, pull off, up, 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 pull off. And then it just kind of goes around the circle like that. If, like I said before, we stay in this pattern. Different people do it differently. Like I said, I started, up, started with an upstroke. That's just because it feels comfortable for me to do it. If you want to start with a downstroke, it technically makes more sense to do it with a downstroke because you have a bunch of downstrokes coming after it. But that's just how I'm doing it for now, okay? It could change. So. If you're gonna stay there, then you could just loop it. So when it comes to like, okay, I'm gonna, and like I said for this last note, you can either hammer on or do an upstroke. It just depends on if you're gonna go up or down. So if I'm gonna string these all together, down, down, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on, slide up to the 12th fret, pull off, up, 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 pull off, And then I'm just gonna come back up again. So down, down, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on, and then I'm gonna slide up to that 17th fret, pull off, up, 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 and then pull off. And then you may have noticed that I started from that second position. It's the same finger pattern, I mean the same sweeping pattern as before. So if I'm starting from here, down, down, hammer on, down, 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 if I'm gonna start from the next position, it's the same pattern. So down, down, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on. Oops. Down, 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 hammer on, down, 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 hammer on. So just because we're, we're, if it's still a six string sweep in one position versus another, the, the sweeping pattern itself will stay roughly the same. So down, down, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on. So once you memorize that and just get it in your bloodstream, like, then it will become easy for you. 
So this is, I'm gonna start with major, okay? Okay, and then I'm gonna do minor. So there's a difference there. And this is just all in A. These are the patterns that Ingve and, and Jason Becker, Jason Becker does some crazy stuff, but for the most part, just to get a solid foundation for sweeping and an understanding of the fretboard and how the, the, the chord shapes relate to the arpeggios themselves, this, this creates a good foundation. So that way, when you see the fretboard, instead of just seeing a bunch of boxes, you can kind of see patterns and you can kind of see chunks of it. Now, this is where it kind of gets fun. If I'm gonna do, let me do, let me move it up. I'm gonna be B major. Okay, I'm gonna do a major first position, and you don't have to stick to this. This is where it kind of gets a little bit fun. Oops. Instead of sliding up all the way up there, I'm just gonna experiment a little bit. So I'm on that last note. I'm just gonna slide up one, and then I'm just gonna continue on with that second shape. So just because oops, you don't have to just do this shape in that particular position, you can move it around. So here's my first position, and I'm going to do that second position sweep, but I'm, not, I'm just going to move it up one fret from where I was. All of a sudden it sounds like something from a movie. So this is this is kind of what's cool about it is you can take these three shapes and kind of experiment. You don't have to exactly know how many sharps or flats or how they all relate to one another. You can just experiment. So instead of sliding up one fret, I'm gonna slide up two now. That sounds interesting. like this quirkiness to it or a certain color or, or, or emotion to it and like I said I'm just doing that first position and that second position sweep but the spacing between the two shapes is different okay Oops. now I didn't even move it at all so from where I'm at I just do that second position without sliding anywhere Pretty cool. And you can also mix the major and the minor shapes together. Most of the time if you hear a song, whether it's like a symphony or a song on the radio, it's a combination between major and minor chords that, that makes the makes it really happen the way it does. Just because something's in a minor key doesn't necessarily mean that all the chords are minor. It's the mixture between a minor and a major chord in a certain progression that makes it sound pretty cool. We're, we're gonna make, mess around with the minor shapes now. So I'm gonna be, I'm back in e, uh, B, my bad. I'm gonna do minor now. So same thing, down, down, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on. I'm gonna stay where I'm at and I'm gonna do that second position sweep. So instead of sliding up anywhere like I did with the major, I'm just gonna stay where I'm at. And this is, this, these aren't the only options you have. This is just kind of showing the, the possibility. Okay, so I'm gonna stay where I'm at. Now I'm gonna do that second position sweep. So whereas what I would do before, oops. That shape, I'm just gonna shift it down. So where I ended that first sweep, I'm gonna start that second sweep right where I'm at. Now it sounds like something out of like Lord of the Rings or something. Now you may notice before I told you, yeah, this is a this is a, the hammer on the pull up is the same, but because I'm not sliding anywhere, I'm gonna have to get that note again. So I am gonna use an upstroke. So down, down, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on. And then when I get into that next shape, I'm gonna do an upstroke, pull off, and then I'm just gonna continue the way I did it before. Okay? 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly combine them together. And this is where it gets kind of fun. So you have, I'll, I'll be back in B now, okay? Same, same key. So now I'm going to do this. So I did that first position and that second position and nothing's changed. The spacing is still the same. So this is a B major and this is still a B major. Now I'm going to do, so this is B major, B major. Now I'm going to do an E flat minor. And then I'm going to do another E flat minor. So, oops. <laughs> okay. E minor. And then, I don't know if I can do this. E flat minor. So E flat minor. Uh, let's see if I can do this again. There we go. So it's a B major in two positions and then an E flat minor in two positions. So, oops. So now we're making music out of it. And I'm just using, I, I really just used two out of the three shapes for the major and the minor. So with just these three major shapes and these three minor shapes, the, the whole world can open up for you. It's not like when you think of sweep picking, there's like 20 different shapes. And, and yes, it's true that there are a lot, you know, if you're doing like, leave that part out, that was terrible. <laughs> if I'm doing jazz or something, like a, like a let's say like a, a B minor seven. If I do something like that. Uh, it turns into like some kind of hybrid picking situation or, or like I said before you can do like a diminished so there's different variations but for the most part the main body of what somebody calls sweet picking would mainly consist of these three minor shapes and these three major shapes and there are certain variations to these but if you're somebody that's just kind of starting out, just doing sweep picking and kind of getting an understanding of it, if you kind of stick to these three patterns for the major and minor, you can sort of branch out from there. There are major and minor shapes, but there's also uh, major and minor seventh shapes too, but, but that's another day. Like for example, like this is like a B minor seven. So it's not just a regular sweep, there's other extra notes involved, but that's, that's for another day. My name is Daniel Repperick peter If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from me, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thanks for watching, guys.